I'm out here uh, today I'm enjoying the beautiful weather that we have right before uh, summer is gone and fall is uh, fully at our door and today I would like to uh, share with you a message that God has placed on my heart um, it's in the Old Testament it's found in Exodus chapter 3 looking at verses 1 through 14 and uh, if you have your Bibles I would encourage you to look there with me because we're going to talk today about lessons from a burning bush lessons from a burning bush and if you have your Bibles and you've turned with me to um, Moses or to Exodus chapter 3 verses 1 through 14 we find these words and this is what it says and I'll be reading from the NIV now Moses was tending the flock of Jephro his father-in-law the priest of Midian and he laid the he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb the mountain of God there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses answered, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where, you're are where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of jo Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face, because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come to rescue, come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land to a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Pezuzites, Hivites, Jebusites, and now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians have oppressed them. So now on, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And, the, and God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you should say to the Israelites. I am has sent you to me. Well, these are powerful words and we're gonna be looking at that and seeing what God really has for us in this lesson of the burning bush because I believe it's applicable, not just in the life of Moses and the Israelites who were going through that time, but it's applicable to you and I today. Here's what I know. I ask you this question. Have you ever seen something unusual? Something unexpected that you weren't thinking or planning on that took you by surprise? Can you imagine Moses in the wilderness going about his task of leading the sheep to the places where they can get better grazing and better water? And yet he would look over and spot and spy a bush consumed by fire and yet that bush seems to continue going and 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 not be consumed obviously this was a sight for him to behold 
in today's message, Moses has a moment with God that's about to come that he could have very easily missed. Just like you and I can miss the appearance, the encounter of God in our lives if we don't pay attention and see and watch for the signs of God at work. And here's what I mean by that. We will be exploring Moses' encounter and learning from the lessons that Moses learned from God through the burning bush. The first lesson we learn is this. God often shows up in the ordinary things or tasks that we have in our lives. And he does it in some unique and special ways. He does it in some unique and special ways. Here is Moses going about his business, an ordinary task that was not significant in any way, but in that insignificant task, God shows himself through this burning bush. I want you to know that this mountain, this Mount Horeb, has a rather unique name to it. Most people don't know this, but the name for this mountain literally means desolate place. So here is Moses in this desolate place where he doesn't assume or believe he's going to see anything significant. He's just going about leading the sheep to get some water and get some, some nice grassland to graze on. He had no expectation that he was about to have an encounter with the mighty God. That's the first thing that we understand and see in this. But what's interesting is this place that is Moses encounters it for the first time as a desolate place, because of the presence of God, it becomes a divine place of God's presence. And where is Moses told to lead the people? When he leads them out of Egypt, when he comes to the place, they were to be brought to this mountain, this desolate place as it was known because it would be in this desolate place that God would reveal himself to the children of Israel and become their God and lead them to become a great nation that is there today for us to see and fellowship. The second thing that we learn is this, God seeks to garner our attention. He calls out to us through sometimes unusual events that occur in our lives. Things that kind of are out of the ordinary. Things that we would not anticipate or expect. I want you to think about this. We've heard the expression, curiosity killed the cat. But I want you to realize something, that in our spiritual walk, it's important that you and I have a godly curiosity. A desire to look at our ordinary routine daily and say, God, reveal yourself to us in a unique and special way. Help us to see you through the ordinary. Help us to see you in the unusual events that happen, the things that just kind of like stand out to us and we don't know why they happen, but they occur. Help us to see those things, Lord God, and find you in them, seek you in them, because you will certainly reveal yourself. It's important that you and I respond in such a way. The third thing that we discover in here is this, the third lesson, we find that God's holy ground is often right next to the ordinary task or routine that you're in. God is the one who makes ground holy. He takes ordinary, common ground, but by his virtue of his presence being there, he anoints it and creates it to be a holy ground, a holy spot for God to encounter us. And when we encounter God in these holy moments, when we encounter God on this holy ground, it's important that we remove anything and all things that could hinder us. Remember what God said to Moses. What was Moses' shoes? His shoes are what led him when he murdered someone. His shoes are what led him into the wilderness. His shoes are what led him into all the trouble and the things that he has encountered. And God is saying, leave your shoes here because I'm taking you to a new place where those shoes are not gonna be what's gonna lead you into your future because I'm gonna lead you by my own special design. And so God said, leave your common ordinary walk, your ordinary steps and allow me to direct your path. And God still calls us to that very thing. 
Notice what it says in the word there. Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I want you to hear me when I say this and listen up to these words. We cannot move forward. We cannot move forward with our legs shackled to our past. We cannot move forward with our legs shackled to the past. God often wants to remove the things that hinder us, the things that prevent us from drawing closer and nearer to God. So let us be willing to do so. The fourth thing that we discover is this, that God's word, that God's calling, his command to us is not optional. When God calls us, when he leads us in a new direction, he is not expecting you to make a choice that is, okay, well, I could take it or leave it. It, it might be good. God is calling us to yield ourselves completely to him, to obey his command, to obey him in what he's calling us to do. Moses didn't have a choice in essence. Yes, he could have chosen to say, God, I reject this. I'm going to go my own way. But if he wanted to be faithful to God, if he wanted to have this relationship with God, if he wanted to walk on holy ground, then he was going to have to be obedient and follow where God was leading him. This is so important, and so many people miss this. This leads us to the fifth point, and that is this. God often in these moments has a three-fold ministry that he does for us as he leads us in our calling. Here's what I want you to get. And we find this in how God speaks about what he saw he was calling Moses to. What was the reason Moses was called? And what is it? We see it there. He saw the people of Israel. He saw the sufferings that they were going through. And God felt their, their pain, their sufferings, and their oppression. And he was coming to liberate and set them through, free. And he was going to do it through his servant, Moses. And so here are the three things I want you to see in this. God reveals his reality because he deals with it God knows it he faces it he doesn't deny it God deals with reality God manifests his presence and that lastly God will reveal it through signs and through wonders then we see in here that the Lord not only knows but he sees our troubles and our sorrows that we encounter in this oppressive life this in this we see God's sympathy but we also see that God seeks to come and bring deliverance from these oppression and this oppression that we encounter in our lives. And then thirdly, we come to see that God knows and sees, he empathizes with us in our troubles and sorrows. You see, God through Jesus Christ took on the flesh dealt with it, lived with it. He knows what it's like for you and I to be human because he himself was human and he overcome the world. And it's through that that he will empower us to overcome him as well. The last lesson we learn is this. All life has crisis. You and I, no matter who we are, how we might try, we're going to encounter crisis in our life. And here's what God promises us. When we encounter crisis, who will we choose to believe in? Will we choose to believe in ourselves, our world, the things around us? Or will we choose to believe in God? Because whom we choose to believe in and place our faith in is going to dictate what happens to us. And so God is saying to us, and the lesson we learn here is that Moses, when he yielded himself, when he placed himself in the hands of God, God promises came through and he brought deliverance to those Israelites who were in bondage and of course we know the rest of the story of what happens in the Old Testament regarding that but it's important for you and I to realize that God he will empower us to face our oppressors he will equip us or provide a servant or a leader or a deliverer who will guide us through these moments in times because there are times when we're in over our heads and we need somebody else to lead us and bring us through and this we can count on so I want you to know that the same God who delivered Israel, who brought Moses to become a deliverer of the people, is the same God who will help and equip you and I because God's word is true. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Will you pray with me? Father God, please help us to follow you, to trust in you, to put our faith in you, to learn these lessons that our great father of the faith 
Moses had learned in trusting and following you. For we pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in the peace and the strength of God, my friends. Amen.